Hi guys, uh, Glorious Egg Roll here, and today I have a, another new video for you. Uh, what I have decided to do, and this is actually something that I've been working on for quite a while now, is I wanted to try and build like a $500 budget rig that could play AAA titles on Linux. That sounds like it's, uh, it's damn near impossible. <laughs> but uh doing a lot of research and doing a lot of testing i think that we have a really 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 good build here so uh right off the bat i'm going to jump into it uh i've got a list of parts here uh this does involve some parts from aliexpress some parts from ebay some parts from amazon some parts from newegg it was basically whatever you have at your disposal um so just keep that in mind it's not going to apply to all regions but if you're really on a budget and you're at least within North America or Canada, you should be able to get these parts for similar prices. So uh, that being said, first let's go ahead and just jump into the parts. Uh, let me minimize my camera here. Here, I'll just turn it off. All right, so with AliExpress, uh, one of the brands that I've come to know and uh, found to be more reliable out of some of the other brands is Huananzi. Uh, I have previously purchased an RX 560 from this brand, a couple other motherboards from this brand, and they seem to be one of the few companies that gives better build quality and uh, more trustable build quality, um, and I'll explain that a little bit too. So with this board, it'll run you about uh, 100 bucks chipped, 103. Um, you obviously may have to pay taxes depending on where you live. I had about $10 worth of taxes on mine, so keep that in mind. Uh, with the board, one of the reasons, there's a couple of reasons that I chose this board. One, it was one of the most dominant uh, boards on YouTube from other reviewers that had positive outlooks. Uh, shout out to my const, M I Y C O N S T. Uh, he is a YouTuber that reviews a lot of AliExpress boards, and this was one of the better ones that he had on his recommendation. So I took his advice there, and I'm actually really happy with this board. It's got decent VRM cooler, uh, decent VRM cooler here. It's only got two slots for your RAM, but that's okay. We're we're not going for you know a ton of RAM. We only need to fit 16 gigs on there. Uh, it's got your one PCIe slot you need for your GPU. It does have your M.2 slot. Uh, I did not use the M.2 slot because I actually went with a, a SATA SSD because they're slightly cheaper and they're easier to port to other systems. Um, so I'll, I'll explain that a little bit as well when we get to it. Uh, for now, uh, let's see if it's got a picture of IO. Yeah, so obviously these are hardly ever used anymore. You get USB 2, USB 3, and your 1 gig Ethernet and your sound. They all are basically, they function as they're expected. They get the job done. Even the sound works fine. Um, I did record the sound on my benchmarks so you guys can hear that it, it sounds good enough for what you need. Uh, next up, so when you get this, uh, you're gonna need a cooler for the CPU. And we'll get to the CPU in a minute whenever we get to eBay. But right now we're still on AliExpress. And this is what you want. This is like hands down one of the cheapest, best coolers that you can get. I've literally bought like six of these things over the time for like various different systems. And it's because they, they have, they give you mounting bracket options for pretty much whatever you would need. The one that I always go with is just the standard no light, two fan, four pin connector version. And this has done me really, really well on like a lot of my builds. The reason that you're going to want a, a, a decent cooler like this is because the processor that we use, is a, it's got a 140 watt TDP. Now, you might think that's high, but keep in mind that most of the higher end Ryzen chips are about 95, 105 watt TDP, and even some of the older ones were like 125 watt. Um, so 140 isn't really that much, especially also considering we're pairing it with a low power consuming GPU. So that's the cooler that we go with. Uh, next, you're going to want to know what processor we're pairing with this. That's where we hop into eBay here. The one that I recommend here is the 1650 V3. 
Now, there is another one that you may be familiar with, which is the Xeon 2640V3. I tested both of these. There's a problem with the 2640V3, and that is in order for it to perform the way you want it to perform, you have to do a BIOS hack that en enables all core turbo. And when you enable that all core turbo, yes, you get turbo on all cores, but it only boosts to 3.4 gigahertz. And for some games, especially for example, in Elden Ring, I found that that game wants higher than 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, you can hit, since it's boosting at all cores, you can hit 1080p 60 with that processor, but I would not rely on it. And I would not, uh, I wouldn't say it's very future proof. This one, on the other hand, the 1650v3 is easily overclockable. It boosts to, I believe, 3.8 or 3.9. Um, but more importantly, with that snowman cooler, I was, I, I have three of these processors and I have easily overclocked all three of them on various different motherboards to 4.1 gigahertz very easily in the BIOS without any BIOS hacks, without any uh, customized BIOS flashes or anything like that. You just pop in the processor, put the cooler on it, go in the BIOS and crank up, crank up the core to 4.1 gigahertz and you're done. That makes it a lot easier, especially for people who aren't too familiar with uh, BIOS modding or BIOS hacking. So uh, I, I feel like those two are kind of like the only really uh, decent picks for this because if you're going to pick a higher end processor there's no point in doing it on this platform you might as well just go spend the money on a newer platform so 1650 v3 xeon is what we're going with uh the ram again this is one of the cheapest uh sellers that i found on ebay and i found them to be very reliable i have ordered legit at least 200 dollars worth of ram from these guys um but yeah You'll, 16 gigs of RAM will run you 40 bucks and that is ECC register memory which is very very good and that is compatible with that motherboard that motherboard accepts both ECC and non ECC RAM so there's our 16 gigs of RAM uh, next since we're still on eBay the GPU that we're going to use is the 5500 the, the Radeon 5500 4 gigabyte model now uh, there's a non XT OEM version, which you can see right here, which runs you anywhere between 160 to 180 bucks, really well priced, excellent card. I've done another review with this card as part of a list of cards and a bunch of Elden Ring benchmarks. Um, this is my go-to for 1080p at medium settings. And uh, when we get to the benchmarks, you'll see why uh, this card is awesome. Now, if you can get the, the XT version, like you see this guy has a 5500 XT, that I would go with that because they usually have better coolers and I believe it may have higher, slightly higher clocks. But if not, the 5500 four gigabyte is like perfectly fine. Both of them will get you your 1080p 60 at medium settings and pretty much like most of the AAA games you throw at it. So that covers your, your eBay. Um, if you, absolutely have no other choices there is the r9 390 8 gigabyte car that you can get on aliexpress and that'll run you around the same price but i would highly highly recommend not doing that stay away from that if you can preferably try maybe getting like an rx 580 4 gigabyte if you can it depends like with the older cards I think the three that you'll still be able to hit 1080p 60 with would be the, the 584 gigabyte, 5500 4 gigabyte, and the R9 390 4 gigabyte, or uh, 8 gigabyte, excuse me. Uh, apart from those, I really wouldn't go with any other cards. Um, on the NVIDIA side, I believe you can do the, uh, the 1650 Super, but that's going to run you probably closer to $200. I would not go lower than the Super. Um, there, obviously, there's the 1650 Ti and the 1650. Uh, those I have not benchmarked. I only know that the 1650 Super, for a fact, will hit 1080p 60 with uh, medium settings on pretty much every game that I threw at it. So anyway, uh, moving on, 
like I said, this particular build, we're going where it's it's Linux oriented, so we're going with the radi the ADMD side for the those Mesa drivers. And we want something fairly recent that's compatible with DirectX 12 with VKD 3D, which is why we go with this card. Uh, power supply. Power supply, we went with a Thermaltake Smart 500 watt, just a 80 plus white label. It's nothing crazy, nothing fancy, but you can almost always find this on Amazon for like 35 bucks. Not even Amazon, like I checked Amazon, I've checked Newegg, I've checked a couple other places. It's almost always at the same price. And I'm not a big fan of Thermaltake, but that's a solid CP, or it's a, it's a solid power supply. Uh, next up is our storage. And I went with a 512 gigabyte team group uh, SATA SSD. Now I could have gone NVMe, but it also would have boosted the price up like anywhere between five to 10 bucks. Also, um, sometimes with the, the Chinese motherboards, when they add an NVMe slot, you don't know if it's going to perform at full speed or not. I did not test that board but I didn't, I had purchased this drive before I even got the board. So I, it, it didn't really cross my mind. I'll have to do maybe some like speed tests on the NVMe drive, uh, NVMe slot on that board. But I know for a fact that this works. It's cheap, gets the job done, it works, and it gives you plenty of space for your games. Obviously you're not gonna be storing a million games on there, but you know, you know three or four games will fit on a 500 gigabyte drive just fine as long as it's not like, you know, all Call of Duty games. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's that. Uh, the case, originally, this was the case that I got. I actually managed to get two of these. Uh, one is for another build, but this is not my favorite case. I got this on sale at 40 bucks. Um, it was on sale for 40 bucks for like, I don't know, maybe a month or so. And it does have its pros and cons. It's fairly easy to build in. It's really nice that you can move this uh, this little IO front side. You can move this like down here or up here or over here, which is really, really nice, especially considering that the cables for it are kind of short. Uh, it is long enough for like really long GPUs. Like I was able to fit the triple fan R9390 in here, which is a huge card. So that was really nice. Uh, and it's it's thick enough to wear like the, the Snowman cooler fit in here um that's kind of one of the important things that if you're going to get a cheap case make sure that it's like uh just thick enough so that it fits some of the beefier coolers uh the thing i did not like about this is that let me see if they have a picture of the back here no that's not it i guess they don't show it okay so if you look at the back where the the gpu slot the slots are or the uh, the pci slots are those are the kind of like welded in aluminum where you have to break them apart and they are very very much stuck in there they're not easy to break and a couple of my pci slots uh the metal that goes in between those slots is bent because i was trying to get those stupid breakaway slot pieces out so I do not recommend this car, this this case for that. Also, uh, one other gripe about this case is these little front panel things. There's one here and there's one on the top, and they're both basically just magnetic fan uh, filters. They come off really easily. So like if you go to pick it up from the front or you have something else sitting on top of it, like say I, have, I had two cases stacked, this one and then another one on top of it, those slide really easily and I did not like that. So uh, I would say if you can get another case for around 40 bucks that is thick enough for a cooler, uh, a snowman cooler and long enough for a decent sized GPU, go for it. Uh, one of the other options that is here is this one. This is a DIY PC case and I actually thought about buying this one as well and it's got, it's actually got a tempered glass side panel as opposed to the acrylic on the cooler master and it's actually got it's got those same breakaway uh back slots but they're not as terrible as the uh the cooler master one and it's still thick enough to fit 
uh, a snowman cooler. I would say it might be questionable what size GPU you can fit in here. But for our case, the our, the, the 5500 that we're going to put in here, it's just it's perfectly fine. Uh, it just I would just be wary if you're going to put like a super long GPU in here. So uh, yeah, those are our prices and our, our, our build here. And I have a summary here of everything. And here is our original goals. We wanted a $500 price range, something that's Linux friendly and open source, which is why we went with the AMD side on the GPU. Uh, and something that can do 1080p60 on AAA titles, uh, preferably at medium settings. We're not aiming for like top tier, but we want to be able to run it and have it not look like dog shit. So that's what we were aiming for. And here's uh, here's our prices for the core build. The motherboard, the cooler, the CPU, the RAM, 207. Uh, the remaining base build, which was the SSD, the power supply, the case, and or, you know, this is, an alt, this is the same alt case that I listed. And that came out to another 125 bucks. Last, we got our GPU listed here from eBay and the total for everything was 50118. And then of course you, you wanna make sure you factor in your 30, 20 or $30 for whatever parts have extra shipping or extra tax or whatnot. So, you know, not exactly at the $500 or under price range, but it's, it, it's close enough to that ballpark where it's a very reasonable price very good build um just to put this in perspective it would cost you 400 dollars to at least get a like a, a ryzen 3600 and a decent motherboard and then you'd still have to go with the rest of the build <laughs> so just to put that in perspective and this this will this will get you where you're looking at as far as performance goes so anyway um that's it as far as the the build and the prices now let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks i think you guys will be pleasantly surprised at the numbers on these benchmarks because i was i i literally had a holy shit moment multiple times <laughs> so uh yeah let's go over those and you guys can let me know what you think Damn it, I need more time. I've got a lot going on.
Found some. Get in the boat, boy. Still want me to tie it to the boat? Father? What? Did something change? The forest feels different. Hmm. Everything is different, boy. Try not to dwell on it. Yes, sir. was the last.
Get out of here. You all right? Yeah, I think so. Thanks. You can thank me later when we're safe. Holy shit. They'll have some answers at the police station. Wait, you're a cop? Yeah, Leon Kennedy. And you are? Claire. Claire Redfield. You live around here? No. I'm looking for my brother. He's a cop, too. Well, it's a good thing we found each other. I don't know what to expect anymore.
All right, and uh, that was it. That was uh, some kind of crazy benchmarks. Every single one of those games, uh, they hit 1080p 60 at medium settings. Uh, and obviously, I, FSR was enabled where possible, but I only enabled it in the games. I did not go out of my way to use the Wine full screen FSR, even though it's available if I need it for some games. Uh, I did not use that. I chose to just go ahead and use standard 1080p 60 and only enabled FSR where the actual game had it built in. So uh, it was really, really cool to be able to see that and see that those games were able to hit 60 uh, with the hardware that we're running. Uh, I did want to hop back real quick on here and kind of tackle a couple of the things with the motherboard that I had mentioned before I was going to just tackle real quick. Um, okay, so two other things with this motherboard. Like I said, I didn't test the NVMe, so I don't know if it's, uh, it's full speed or not. I went with a SATA drive because it's easier to transfer SATA drives across systems, especially on older systems that don't have an NVMe. Not to mention you can enable, uh, in some, some systems you can enable hot plugging and then just plug them in and out on the fly. And you don't have to mess with, you know, screwing it in and out uh, to get the NVMe out while the board is vertical every single time. So that's, that's why I went with a SATA drive. The other thing about this board, uh, it is, like I said, it's one of the more expensive Chinese boards. You can find X99 boards as low as like 50 bucks. But the problem with a lot of the cheaper ones is that they do, they use uh, cheaper chipsets. Like this one actually has an X99 chipset. Whereas some of the cheaper ones will advertise X99 for the for the build, but then it'll have like a B85 chipset or it'll swap it out for an H, I think 61 is another chipset that they swap it out with. And uh, when it gets into those cheaper ones, the quality becomes really questionable as well as the functionality. So uh, that's another reason to go with this board is because it's got an actual X99 chipset on it. Um, but again that's uh like i said that's that's all i've got for you guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope that this helps you guys out when trying to pick out parts for your build and it also really i wanted to get the point across that you can game on linux and have a good experience without going out and spending an arm and a leg on parts especially considering the market these days um you know and not only that but you've got companies that are trying to force you to upgrade to newer um newer components for example like the 6500 xt that only supports uh pcie gen 4 and if you drop it on gen 3 it gets bottlenecked to hell uh and the newer 6400 xt that they came out with neither of those have encoders and 6400 xt same story you know you'd need pcie gen 4 which means you got to upgrade to either ryzen uh ryzen 3000 series or higher or amd's or uh, excuse me intel's 12th gen or higher and if you go the the intel route then you also have to upgrade your ram this is not running anything crazy this cpu cost 35 dollars is from 2014 and when I, I i will also say that when i was testing it everything fully you know fully going with games and everything it was pulling maybe like 220 to 250 watts from the wall yeah that's nothing crazy like i said our 500 watt power supply was more than plenty for it so um yeah, again, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, good luck with your builds and hopefully you guys can find some, some good cheap prices. Take it easy.